Hello and welcome to a very special How I Paint Things. Now today on the table we've got something a little bit different and we're going to actually do some scenery. I've got here one of the Sector Mechanicus kits and one of the bulkhead doors from Necromunda. Now these obviously go hand in hand, you know, these look great on a Necromunda themed table or even if you're doing something more like a Forge World or something like that where you want that really built up industrial sort of look for your 40k tables, these are some great kits. Now the basis of this technique is really simple and it focuses on just two colors, Mornfang Brown and Necron Compound. From there we can add whatever colors we want and we can add on details and what have you, but this is really going to focus on just these two colors and how easy it is to get these pieces of scenery just on the table, okay? So what we'll do is first off, I want to talk a little bit about sort of the, the ethos I go for when I'm painting my scenery. Now, some of you might be a little young to remember, but there was a time when matte paintings were the backgrounds in a lot of movies and TV. Now, the example I'm thinking of specifically was in Star Trek, like particularly around sort of 94, 95. What you'd quite often have is an establishing shot where the camera crew would get up on a crane or something, and they'd give you a shot of, let's say this is a, a town or a settlement or something. And then all of this would just be the Paramount parking lot. You know, <laughs> that's how these things would start. But then what they'd do is in post-process, they'd cut all of that out, and instead on the back, they'd have this big, huge, elaborate matte painting. And it would set the scene really, very quickly. And it was cool. You normally only saw that painting the one time, or maybe the second time near the end of the episode. But it kept that image in your head. And you knew, even if they were zoomed in much closer, what the rest of the planet looked like. Now we can use a similar sort of principle when we're doing our 40k scenery. When your opponent comes to the table and there's six foot or four foot or whatever amount of scenery laid out on the table, we want to just have that one brief moment of wow. And then when your models go on the table, they're the stars of the show. All of this stuff should just sort of fade into the background a little bit. It doesn't want to be like really boring, but it doesn't need to be the star of the show. And that's what we're going to do with just these two colors. Okay, so let's get out the brushes and get started. Now to start with, I've got a large dry brush. If you've got a bigger brush, more power to you. <laughs> you might want to use that. But I've just loaded up a bit of Mornfang Brown. And what I'm going to do is start in a vaguely circular motion, just piling this on. It might be a little hard to see on the camera actually, so I'll do this a little bit overboard. But what you'll find is that over time, you'll build up these areas of sort of dingy, dirty brown. Let's get a slightly better look. There we go. And this can be useful as the base coat for just about anything. What you'll find is if you're watching some of the tutorials like on Warhammer TV, for example, they will say, um, you know, to wash everything, get yourself some Agrax Earth Shade or some Nuln Oil or what have you, and just go crazy over a base coat of something. The problem with that is if you're going to shade an entire scenery piece and an entire board's worth of scenery, you are going to go through Agrax Earth Shade like you are drinking it. So we're going to do all of this without any washes, okay? So what I'm going to do now is finish off the other side of this. You can start to see how that's building up. I'll do the other side and I'll do the same to that whole piece of Sector Mechanica scenery. And we'll come back and see how those look. Now with that Mornfang brown dry brushed on, these things are looking pretty ugly. <laughs> uh, one of the things to bear in mind is you're going to get places where it goes a little patchy, where it goes on a little bit thicker in some places. But that's kind of the point. You don't need this to be uniform. If this ends up looking patchy and ugly, all the better. So what we've got next is the Necron Compound, and I bet you can guess what's going to happen here. All it is, is you need just a little bit on your brush at a time, because this is one that you really want to build up, rather than having too much go on in one fell swoop. So we get our, you know, our door, our shield, whatever you're making, and just start lightly dry brushing the silver and you'll find it catches the very high points and makes them look a little more worn, like they see a lot of action against them. Now this you can add as much as you like. Um, sometimes it'll look better if you go like over a certain area a few times to make it look shinier, but that's really the basis of this whole technique. 
brown and then silver. So what I'll do now is the other side. And you see, I've still not dipped back in for any more paint. I can do this all off of one brush. What I'll do now is I'll finish off this panel here, and then I'll do the rest of the uh, Sector Mechanicus part too. And then we'll see how they look when they've got all of that silver on. Now that that's done, we can get on to some of the fun stuff. Now you could put this on the table, you know, and play a couple of games with it, but it's not particularly inspiring as it is. All the same, you can see how easy it is to get the basics of one of these sort of rusted, beaten up old bits of scenery done. So, hey, maybe that helps you sort of get started. What I've got here is a little bit of burnt red. This is a Vallejo color. And I'm just going to get one of these cheap, nasty brushes. And what we're going to do is on one of these bigger areas where I want to put some color. is just sort of start stippling toward the edge, not being particularly careful, because I want a little sort of raggedy edge and that brown stuff towards the edge of each of these panels. If I get into the recesses, eh, it doesn't particularly matter. But what I'm going to go and do now is go around all of these panels and just blap on some of this red. Okay. Now, how quickly does that add a bit of life to the scenery? Nice and simple. It doesn't have to be that red. You could use corn red, for example, or you might want to use a completely different color. Yellow can be a pretty cool one, but you will need to do a couple of coats of that. It can look really good when it's super patchy though, so something to bear in mind. Now over here, I've already got one of these red doors for my Necromunda scenery, and it can be helpful to sort of color code them so that, you know, if you've got a, a games mastered uh, game, for example, it's easier to identify certain portions of the battlefield. So instead, I'm going to go, I've just got some Cantor blue, and I'm going to do the same thing again, just quickly batting in <laughs> little areas of color, just to add a bit of visual interest to this. Then we'll get a little Balthazar gold, and let's just do some of these sticky outy bits. <laughs> just get a little bit more color on there. Now this is really down to you, how you want to do these bits of scenery, because, I mean, again, you could put them on the table just like this. But adding just a fraction more in the way uh, of, you know, visual interest without adding too much in the way of color, this will help you really get some scenery that'll blend into the background when you're playing on it, but can be fun to look at while you're actually setting it up. So I think that's enough of that, to be honest. Let's do some on this big old beastie here too. Now here I've got some lead belcher and I'm gonna do these escape hatches just on top of here. Again, very quickly, batting on some color, just to get a little bit of sort of, you know, a bit of contrast, make this area look as though there are some working pieces on it. So let's just finish these off. Once I've done these two little hatches, I figured for a little bit of balance, it would be neat to do the sort of uh, ring around this fan blade here in silver too, so that there's a bit of balance to it on the table when you've got models on top. But I'm not going to do much more on camera, to be honest, guys, because hopefully this is enough to sort of get you thinking, get you jogging on those ideas. You can do as much to these as you want. And I mean, these can end up looking like a third army on the table. But as far as the simplest technique to get them looking, you know, pretty OK, get a bit of color on them and put them on the table. Hey, Mournfang Brown, Necron Compound, and then whatever else you want to do with them, guys. So as ever, guys, hopefully something was useful to you there. You can drop a comment down there in the old YouTube box or my Twitter and Facebook are both linked there too. So thank you very much for your time. You guys enjoy the rest of your day.